Show yourself, Obelisk the Tormentor! The Shadow Game, as I call your name, Wing the Dragon of Rome! I summon the almighty Swiper the Sky Dragon! What's up YouTube, Daryl here from Zephyr Games, and today as you guys smash that like button way above 50 within the first 24 hours, I am bringing you a test and video for the vampire profile that I showed you guys the other day. Before we get started, massive shout out to Venom Battle Gear and Spallo Tattoos who designed this awesome and printed this awesome god mat. Keep your eyes peeled as it will be coming out for sale soon. So if you want to grab one of these mats, you know where to look. With all of that out of the way, we're going to shuffle this deck up. We're going to do two test stands going first, two test stands going second, and we're going to show you the pros and the cons behind vampires. So, a very decent shuffle and a good old cut. Our opening hand of five will be one, two, three, four, five. Now, that's actually not a bad hand. Uh, obviously, if your Shiranui Solitaire gets hit, then it goes. It really, really slows your turn down. But you've got two control cards, well, one control card in Crackdown, one very good kind of card to get you a Sorcerer out of the deck or any Vampire out of the deck into the graveyard. Uh, and what you can actually use on this is you can get Familiar as well. So that gives you your Vampire spells and traps um, and kind of go from there. Now obviously, with the cards like Scourge um, and the Volvodi, they're not that great going first, but we've actually got the ability to build this up quite nicely. So we're going to normal summon our Solitaire, we use Solitaire's effect. And that straight away is going to give you your uni zombie. Now, you've got a couple of routes here. Now, you have used your normal summon, so what you kind of need to do is you do need to be able to get a familiar to the graveyard to then enable yourself to get you your domain. So, here's a couple of options you can go from here. Now, option number one, uni zombie, send Mizuki, you've got a level 8 synchro. Option number two, you can use uni zombie's effect to send from your deck to your graveyard one of the familiars. Now you can either go for the vampire familiar, um, but we're probably going to go for more specifically the retainer. Now by sending the retainer, what you've then got the ability to do is you get to ditch one of the cards from your hand, which will be ideally vampire sorcerer. Keep in mind that Uni Zombie is a level four right now. So what you're going to do is you're going to use the vampire retainer, and keep in mind it also says you can just send any vampire cards. You could send the awakening if you wanted to. You special summon back the retainer by sending the sorcerer. This then triggers retainer's effect to pay 500 life points to add a vampire spell or trap. Now you've got two options you can go from here. Now if you go for the domain, it will give you the ability of special summoning scourge down from here. Well not special summoning, normal summoning your scourge down because you can banish the vampire sorcerer. Your other options can lead you into more control and go for a domination, which then protects off of the um, retainer. But keep in mind as well, you don't really need to be going for that. Another option you have is the Desire. Now the reason you'd go for the Desire is you'd actually then use Desire to target um, your Retainer and Retainer would then send the Familiar, which then means you could send the Scourge or the Awakening or of course Uni Zombie, uh, not Uni Zombie, sorry, uh, the Scourge, the Awakening or the Retainer, not Retainer, sorry, because you'll get banished as well, got to remember that, to bring back the Familiar, you then pay 500 life points, the Familiar will then get you a uh, Vampire Monster and the Vampire Monster that I would advise searching off of that would be your Froilin. Um Now keep in mind as well, the other option that you do have is you do have the ability of going into your Vampire Sucker. But by doing that, because you don't have any trigger effects to revive from the graveyard, because your opponent doesn't have uh, a monster in the graveyard at this moment in time. So, you've got to be very careful on where you want to go from here. And keeping in mind that Retainer gets banished. This is the one downside of Retainer is, unless you've got the ability to bump its level, which you can do with Uni Zombie, only making it a level 3, um, it's going to make it a lot more difficult to kind of overlay it um, and kind of maintain it from being banished. So, depending on what you want to choose here, you can go with Domination, and then what you're pretty much sitting on is you're going to sit on with a, a Crackdown, an Awakening, and a Domination. So you've got three forms of instruction. You'd still keep the Scourge in your hand. Uh, and then what this allows you to do is this negates a Spell Trap or Monster Effect. This will still one of your opponent's monsters, and then the Awakening will allow you to bring out a um, Vampire Monster from your deck, which could be Familiar, and then Familiar would then go to the Graveyard during the end phase, and then you can then use uh, Familiar's Effect in the Graveyard to send a Vampire card to bring it back. Or you can, of course, you can bring out another retainer, and then that would mean that you're going to get another spell attract during the next turn. 
So this is your more control end board. And keep in mind, you haven't even used Uni Zombie Second Effects. If you wanted to, you could send um, Scourge to the graveyard. And the reason you would do that is you would then make uh, Uni Zombie a level 5. So if you did play Synchro level 7s, you could do that as well. If you went with the domain, the play route would quite simply be domain, activate to get an additional normal summon, you'd banish the um, vampire sorcerer from the graveyard, and then you get to normal summon um, your scourge. Now the only issue by bringing down your scourge right now is its trigger effect on normal or special is to pay a thousand life points to target a vampire monster in your graveyard, which you don't have, and then get to special summon it. So you're not really gaining a huge amount of advantage off of doing that, and you've actually lost yourself an omni in the game. The final option of going for Desire is Desire gives you the option you can either activate this to target the Retainer uh, and then you get to send a Vampire Monster um, from your deck to the graveyard with a different level so you can send the Familiar and the target monster becomes the level of that monster. So that's another nice way of boosting up the Retainer so that you've got a Synchro play here as well if you want to. The other option is you get to target a Vampire Monster in the graveyard to send a monster you control to the graveyard and special summon that target monster. So the only thing you're going to be doing is bringing back your Sorcerer, which really isn't giving you a lot to play with. Um, so the first effect would be your best option, and doing that you're going to send your Familiar. I would personally say you're Familiar. You could send, if you wanted to, any level 4, uh, which would be another Sorcerer, just to give you a level 8 Synchro. But then again... All you're really doing by going into the level 8 synchro is you're either going to make Bills, the Diabolical Dragon, you could make the Chaos Royal, the Chaotic Magical Dragon, and um, that will give you some excavation plays. Um, but again, unless you're going to hit something amazing, you're not really able to gain too much advantage. The other reason for sending Familiar as well is if you wanted to send in Familiar, make this a level 1, you could then use the effect of Familiar to send Awakening or send the Scourge to bring back the Familiar and then straight away you've got 4, 5, 6, 7, a level 7's on board if you keep the Scourge and send for example the Awakening you can then make a Synchro level 8 so it really depends on where you want to take this in my opinion this is the better end board for you because you keep your Scourge in hand for your next turn and that will then give you the ability to banish the Sorcerer. You've got two forms of interruption there, and you've got the ability of the Awakening. Now, one other thing you could do is you could, if you wanted to, sit, um, link these two together and go into your Vampire Sucker. Now, by doing that, you still have the ability, because technically you do control a Vampire Monster in the form of Vampire Sucker. So I'm just going to put the Vampire Sucker up here for now. So you'd still have the protection of dom um, domination, you'd still have the ability of crackdown, and then you've also got the vampire awakening effect to bring a vampire out. Another option, if you really, really wanted to, is you could make this an IP Mascarina, but the issue is, what you'd then do with the IP Mascarina, which works out quite nicely, is you would go... Um, this would be dead until you activate awakening. So you activate awakening, bring a vampire on the board, uh, well... Yeah, because this would be IP, and then you've got your Domination to protect. You've got a Crackdown to steal, so then technically you have the ability of IP to go into a Link 4, or you have the ability of IP to go into the Underworld of the Goddess. So it really depends on which route you'd want to go and what you decide to put into your extra deck. Um, but other than that, I, yeah, you can kind of see the control aspect you can kind of do with this going first. Now obviously it's not, hey, I've got 20 Omni Negates, but you can see the variety of plays you had as well. Like if you really wanted to get um, Scourge on the board and you had another Vampire in the graveyard, you could do. If you really wanted to get uh, Vampire Sucker on the board, you could do. If you wanted to sit there with uh, Negates or a Synchro, again, you can do. It's very, very versatile, which is what makes this deck so nice to play. So, after another decent shuffle... Ooh, and a good old cut. I won't go in as much there on all test hands like that, but that was just one of those scenarios where you had so many options, it was good to kind of show you what you could do. So, our next test hand of five will be one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now this is a very, <laughs> very interesting hand. Uh, so straight away you're going to activate the extravagance, hope and pray that it doesn't get stopped because you do kind of need to, to resolve this. Um, so you're going to banish the six, you're going to draw two, and you've pretty much broken from there. So, um, what you're going to do here is obviously you've got your dom domination, you've got your crackdown, uh, you've got your vamp, and your extra is not really useful. So, you're going to normal summon your uni zombie. Uni zombie can then trigger his effect. Now, you've got the ability to pretty much set up everything you need. You've used your normal summon, so you do need to ultimately, if you want to go for domain, to get vamp on the board. But again, with vamp, um, 
you get to target face on once your opponent controls, so it's going to be better going second than it is going first. So you kind of want to use it as free fodder. You've opened up the familiar, so as long as you put the familiar in the graveyard, you're good to go that route. And you've also got the Mizuki play as well. So it's entirely up to you on where you'd want to go here. But what you can do, you use Zombie, send the Retainer. Um, use Retainer's Effect to send the familiar to the graveyard. Retainer's Effect, pay 500 life points, add a spell or trap. Now you don't really need an additional normal summon right now, so you don't really need to go for Domain. Um, you've got the Domination, and you've got the Crackdown, so I would probably aim to have more of a Foolish Burial kind of play. So that's probably where I'd go more for the Desires. So then on this one, what you've got the ability to do... Um, is you can set up your vampire plays for the future turns by putting sorcerer in the graveyard um, or you can activate desires to bring back the familiar without using familiar's effect that will then give you the ability to draw uh, get the search of a monster without it being banished so really depends on the route you want to go and keep in mind as well if you were to go desires onto the retainer uh, this is where it changes up a little bit more as well is if you go desires on the retainer send your sorcerer Retainer becomes a level 4, Desires resolves, you can then use the effect of the Familiar to send either Vamp or Domination to the graveyard. Keep in mind as well, when cards like this are going to get banished, you can't send them to the graveyard. So you do have to be very, very careful on this one. So you've got your Synchro level 8 here. Um, another option that you can do as well is if you don't want to sync these, you can link these into Vampire Sucker. But the disappointing thing is you've already used Extrav, so you're not going to get that draw off of Vampire Sucker when you bring Familiar back. You do have to keep in mind a lot of things that you're doing with this. Um, they don't clash with each other, but they just kind of restrict the, the areas that you can go to. So by triggering um, Familiar's Effect, we're going to send the Vamp. What that's then going to do is you're going to pay 500 life points to add a Vampire. Now, setting your turn up for the next, or set, setting up for your next turn, I would go for the Void. Um, if you want to go for Defense and Protection, you go with the Froilin, if you're going to leave the board like this as it is. Now, I'm going to go with the Void. We've got the Void set up for the next turn. We've also used Familiar's effect, all of the Familiar's effects, so you do have to be very careful on those that these are going to get banished when they leave the field. Retainer is a level 4, so you can keep Familiar in defense just so you've got a Vampire. You can then Synchro these two together, and you're going to go straight into... I would go for the Chaos Ruler, just because of the ability of going, right, okay, 1, 2, 3... Oh, come on, don't do this to me. 5, there you go, I've got Retainer. I was like, really? You're going to mill all of my fires? Um, that sets up your graveyard a little bit. It would have been better if it, it kind of excavated a Mizuki and then you're like, yeah, I can go a little bit more. Um, but you've got your retainer for your future plays as well, so that sets you up nicely. And you can set the crackdown, set the domination. Now, it's not as good as the last one was, but you've got more preparation for the next turn. So in this example, we'll play through what we've got. So we're going to crack down and interrupt one of our opponent's cards. We're then going to domination and negate one of our opponent's other cards as well. Um, if obviously Familiar gets destroyed, it is what it is. Um, and keep in mind, that if it was a monster card that you negate with Domination, you gain that, that much life points. So that's kind of nice. Uh, this retainer is banished. There we go. So then what you do from here is, even if your board gets cleared, right? you've already stolen one of your opponent's monsters. If they get rid of this and it goes to the graveyard, what, it doesn't really matter how that kind of elevates from there. Now, so let's say they clear your board entirely. You've actually got a very nice combat play off of vo uh, Void as well. So you draw for turn. You can activate extra just to get an additional two more cards. Um, now, here's a couple of options where you've got right now is you can activate your Uni Zombie. Uni Zombie can then um, send the Retainer. Or you can try, basically, what you're trying to do is bait out your opponent. The only issue you've got to be very, very careful of is if the Uni Zombie doesn't get. Um, or if you don't have the ability of bringing Retainer back, you're not going to get the spell card that you need to give you your Void. So, I'll show you maximum potential, like the safety play is literally just banish Sorcerer, normal summon your Void without um, using Tribute, bring back two of your opponent's monsters, and then you can use those two monsters to link up, or you can use those two monsters to sync up, do whatever you want. The greedy play is to go normal summon Uni Zombie. Uni Zombie's first effect. Now, you can pretty much do whatever you want here. Um, you can send your Mizuki because you've got the Retainer, uh, and you're pretty much good to go off the back of that. So you send the Mizuki. You then use the second effect to send the Retainer. That then goes to the graveyard and boosts up Uni Zombie. You can then use Retainer's effect to send the Froilin, because you're not wanting to use her right now. That will then trigger the Retainer's effect, paying 500 life points to get you your Domain. You activate the Domain to give you an additional Normal this turn. You banish the Sorcerer from the Graveyard, which lets you Normal Summon the Void. 
Void will then trigger. Now, obviously, keep in mind as well that the, the reason you're going to make this play is because you're going to be able to resolve the Void. If you're not going to be able to resolve the Void, you're not going to make the play. Void will then steal two of your opponent's monsters from the graveyard. Okay? Now, keep in mind, because these are both your opponent's monsters, they can be treated as level sixes. So you can overlay both of these and go into your Dampier Sheridan. So now your board's looking pretty healthy, all from a, cl a completely clear board. Now, if you had another familiar in the graveyard or another... Um, if you have familiar in the graveyard, you can send domain, get yourself another vampire. Doesn't really matter here. Uh, keep in mind as well that Uni Zombie is now a level 5. So if you were able to, if you had like a domain or anything like that and bump up retainer, you can then use them as a sink. It's entirely up to you. Yeah, also, if these are um, different level monsters as well, you could use those to make a sink. But from all of this, keep in mind as well, your domain is uh, you gain... Um, Da, 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 da. You can only gain this effect once per turn, which is annoying. But each time your vampire monster inflicts battle damage to your opponent, you gain that much uh, life points. So you've got 28 coming off of the void. And if your opponent wants to activate a monster effect with the same name as one in the graveyards, you get to uh, negate the activation. And then if a monster is special summoned to the graveyard, you can tribute two monsters to special summon him back from the graveyard. Now, obviously, you're not going to want to do that. But you can, if you want to. If you want to ram this into something, you can have the ability. Because your vampire Sheridan... Um, so you can once per turn you detach your material to then um, send one card your opponent controls. And then once per turn, uh, you sorry, target one opponent card controls, send it to the graveyard. Once per turn, if a monster card is sent from the field to the, your opponent's graveyard by a card effect or an opponent's monster is destroyed by battle and sent to your opponent's graveyard, detach your material to special summon it. So you basically get to go, right, okay, detach both materials to bring back one of your opponent's monsters. So if that void was destroyed, I'm pretty sure this will trigger off yours. Yeah. So it'll be special summoned from your opponent's graveyard. So if you were to crash your void into something, um, and then you were, let's say you attack with retainer, you attack with uni zombie, um, and then you Sheridan's effect, well it's not quick effect, but you'd have to do this prior to this. But the idea is that you'd have void in the graveyard. What I'm trying to say is you'd have void in the graveyard and then you bring void back. So even if you wanted to link these up or go in to try and borrow sword or anything like that, try to get an additional extender on the board, you then bring back the void. But you shouldn't really need to. Like your battle phase here is just detach, send, detach, revive your opponent's monster. Um, I don't believe it has to come into defense either. Um... Oh, it has to be in defense. What a shame. Why do all the vampire cards have to come back in defense? Um, stops all the link stealing. Then you bring this monster back. You've got the ability, if you wanted to, you've done all this in main phase two, is, uh, not main phase two, main phase one, is you could link all these into Boral Sword, which I have done before, and then you literally just go, cool, wherever my Boral Sword is. Da, da, da. If that's a remainder of well. You've got your Boral Sword, and you just go, attack a Boral Sword, attack a Vodi, switch Vodi, attack a Boral Sword. Plus you've got another crackdown set for your next turn as well, and Domain is going to give you back life points off of your Vodi. So again, that's just another little bit of an example. Now what we're going to do is we are going to kind of go second, and we, by going second we're going to be able to show you um, more of the Vampire's Grave effects, because a lot of the Vampires do rely on your opponent having either a monster or having a card in their graveyard, uh, and it kind of shows you how you can set up your Void. But the issue with the Void is again is you do need to get the Sorcerer into the graveyard, because you're not going to have the monsters to tribute. Anyway. We're going to shuffle this up, and we will do a test hand going second, being, after a decent shuffle, on a good old cut. Oh, one, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, there we go. Uh, that's actually a, a really good hand, again. Now, obviously, you can't guarantee you're going to get the reason in, the reason in is just there as a free extender. But you've got the ability, you've got desires for an additional forged barrel, you've got your Valvode set up, good to go. Um, and so what you can do is you can normally summon your Solitaire. Now you can try and trigger the Solitaire's effect and your opponent will be like, mm, no, I'm going to do something about that. Um, but then that's where reasoning comes in. <clears throat> now you do need to trigger off the Solitaire because your desires, what you want to do here is you do want to be getting um, Uni Zombie. Uni Zombie is actually incredibly important right now because you then need to activate desires to send a monster that is of a different level to Uni Zombie. So the different level will of course be, wherever he is, the Sorcerer. So we've got the Sorcerer into the graveyard. We then want to be able to trigger his second effect to make him a level 5 to send the Retainer. Because that's very important that the Retainer needs to go to the graveyard. Because the Retainer is what's going to allow us to get the Vovodi onto the board. Now, it's entirely up to you. Is The Desires can be uh, an additional revival, it can be an additional send, it can be whatever you want it to be, and so can the Reasoning. 
But ultimately, because we've got everything we need in the graveyard, I wouldn't have an issue using retainer's effect to send the desires to bring back the retainer. Because then what that will allow me to do is pay 500 life points to set myself out of the domain. I can then activate the domain, and by doing so, it gives me additional normal summon of a vampire. So, straight away, what does that mean? Well, that basically means that I can go banish the sorcerer to summon down the Vodi. Vodi's effect will then trigger to give me two of my opponent's monsters from their graveyard. And then straight away, you've got like your Boral Sword play right here. Like, you just go one, two, three, four, Boral Sword with your Valvodi. And that's before you even use Reasoning. So, really it is up to you on where you'd want to go from here. Again, depending on the levels as well, you could make a, a level eight Synchro, you could do anything you really want. So, what you want to do here is, if you're going full on aggression and you want to push for the OTK, you'd go one, two, three, four, keep in mind the Familiar will get banished. That will then allow you to bring out your Boral Sword. And this is going to instigate game there. You can then activate the reasoning. Now, Uni Zombie, cool. I'll be surprised if they call a free. If, if they do, they do. Um, bring out Uni Zombie or a free extend. It doesn't really matter what this is. It doesn't really count. This is inconsequential. Uh, but obviously, your Boral Sword attacks, shifts this, uh, this attacks, shifts this to defense, attacking him for game. Pretty much. Uh, now, obviously, the issue is you haven't really cleared your opponent's board off. But as long as you make your opponent weak enough, the Boral Sword is just going to get stronger uh, and pretty much go off from there. Now, you don't have any follow-up plays, so you do need to make sure that if you decide to go this route of play, um, you're going to win the game. Now, obviously, the other thing you could do is if you didn't want to go that route of play, is you could make your, uh, make your way into, before you bring back Retainer or anything like that, try and make your way into a Vampire Sucker. Vampire Sucker will then give you an additional draw. Then you've got the ability, as you build up, to link with your opponent's monster or one of your opponent's monsters and go into Underworld of the Goddess. That will then disrupt your opponent even more. Um, and then you can build off of the back of the Underworld of the Goddess. So it just depends on if you know you've got game or if you haven't. Another thing on that Uni Zombie play as well is if you can set out the levels correctly, you can go into the Shogun Saga, which is going to be 45, which with a Boral Sword is 99% sure going to win you the game. So now we're going to go a second again uh, and show you exactly what the deck can do. So you can kind of see that it's not the most stable of decks. It does have a lot to work around and a lot to play and it is reliant on its normal summon uh, and playing a lot of high level monsters. So our second test stand will be one, two, three, four, five, six. It's okay. It's very, very uh, zombie heavy. Um, so we're going to activate the extra. We're just going to draw two. Okay, so we've got some follow-up plays here. Now, you've got a couple of options that you can go. You can go straight away normal side on the Uni Zombie. There's no real bonus about putting the Solitaire in the graveyard right now because most of the stuff we want to send from the deck will be Vampires. Um, so it's entirely up to you. You can go Solitaire. This is a very fragile hand. Very, like, hands down fragile hand. Um, because it's not really... Like, everything you do can get hit by Ash, can get hit by... Called by the Grave can really, really be stopped. So, entirely up to you on the route and where you want to go. Um, let me just confirm, yeah I do. Cool, just make sure. Um, so you can go, to get the most and deck thin and do whatever you need to do, you go Solitaire, tribute that off, summon out your, your third Uni Zombie from the deck. This Uni Zombie's effect can go off to send a Retainer. Retainer just gives you the ability for an, an additional normal summon, in a, in a sense, because that's ideally what you're going to be going for. Uh, but th this is where the issue becomes in the, in the sense is that your retainer can use its effect to send the sorcerer, which is great because now you've set up your ability to get the normal summon of the shadow vampire. But keep in mind as well, so shadow vampire can't be used as XYZ for, except for an XYZ summon of a dark monster. And when this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one dark vampire monster from your deck except itself. But monsters you control cannot attack for the rest of the turn except that special summoned monster. So you've got to be very, very careful. If you do bring down the Shadow Vampire, um, again, what you could ultimately try and do is try and make a Synchro, but you do have to be very, very careful. So by bringing back the Retainer, Retainer can then trigger its effect to give you Domain. That's probably what you want to go for a little bit more. Giving you an additional normal summon of a zombie, uh, not a zombie, sorry, a vampire is important. Um, so this one is probably going to be about more building up your board and trying to pull your opponent's board apart because you're only going to be able to tap with one card if you use Shadow Vampire. So by doing so, what you do is you banish the Sorcerer, that lets you get the additional normal of your Shadow Vampire without Tribute, um, and then this will then trigger its effect to special summon a Dark Vampire from the deck. Now, 
You do have the ability to bring out Froylan. Froylan will then allow you to pretty much guarantee that Froylan will be over something on the board. Um, the issue with that is you can also bring out Scourge, um, but again, you don't have a Vampire in the graveyard. So if you want to save this, you would hold this back and you need to put both of these into the graveyard, but obviously Retainer's going to get banished. So it's very, very difficult to kind of get where you need to go in the precise manner. Um, let me just check. I'm pretty sure Vampire Vamp is normal as well. Yeah, so it needs to be triggered when a vampire is normal summoned. So that kind of really doesn't help you a lot either. Uh, you can bring out another... It's, it's difficult because whatever you bring out is not going to be able to attack. Scourge doesn't get you anywhere. Vamp doesn't get you anywhere right now. So your best option is probably Froylan. Just because it gives you the ability to guarantee that she's going to attack. But then she's not a hand trap. Uh, she's not being treated as a hand trap right now is what I mean. Now you still have plays, because keep in mind, Uni Zombie can still send Mizuki from the hand. So you've got the ability of using Mizuki to bring back your Solitaire. You then have the ability to pretty much do what you want. Now, even before you do this, um, if you hadn't used Extrab, you can make Vampire Sarko get an additional draw. So, really depends. The other reason for bringing out Foiling is it does make the rank 5 if you want to. Um, but I think what we've kind of lost here is we've lost the ability of pretty much stealing our opponent's stuff. So that's a big disappointment. You do have the ability to link climb higher. There's no point in going into Borosaur because only uh, Froilin can attack. You can go into an IP Mascarina to try and lead into an Underworld of the Goddess. That will kind of slightly clear your opponent's board off. You just need to make sure you keep the Froilin around. Um, but then even more damaging is you're leaving Froilin in attack mode. So it's like, ah, oh, it's such a weak spot as well. So there's a lot to kind of consider on where you want to go. So just for, I mean... You could go Scarlight, Red Dragon, Archfiend, that would be funny. Because then it, Scarlight would pop these two and any of your opponent's special summon monsters and burn them. So what you could do is you could attack with Froiland, do a bit of damage there. And then in main phase two, sink the... Oh no, Uni Zombies, are, oh no, Uni Zombies could stay at four. You can bump the Vampire Retainer up. Doesn't really matter when you send the Mizuki. Synchro these into Scarlight. Scarlight can then use the effect to destroy all special summon monsters, which would of course include Froiland. Uh, but it would burn your opponent out for a little bit more and then you'd set the crack down. Now again, not ideal, but it is an option you can go for. Another one you can go for is you, um, because you're not being able to attack with these cards. Uh, another option you can go for is your Chaos Ruler. Uh, and this will give you an excavation of fire. So let's have a look. One, two, three, four, five. So that would give you Scourge if you wanted it. Um, another option you could have done with that board if we take it back a bit. I'm just trying to see how far we can go and if we can set up another negate, basically. So we'd have this. We'd have... Retainer, we'd have these two here. So what you'd then want to do, let's see, if we went... If we went Retainer and Uni into... Uh, could be IP Mascarina, doesn't really matter. Could be Vampire Sucker, but it doesn't. Let's go into IP Mascarina. We then use IP Mascarina plus Vamp plus Solitaire. Ah, oh, we don't leave enough monsters on the board. Plus one of our opponent's monsters. Yeah, we don't leave enough. The idea was trying to get um, Savage Dragon with um, a link in the graveyard. So you would have to, you'd, you'd actually have to go through quite a bit to get this. So you'd have to leave Uni Zombie on the board. So you'd have to use Shadow Vampire plus the Retainer to go into IP Mascarina. You then need to use. Um, no, even that's not enough. Oh, that's a shame. Just something a little bit extra, but the idea is that to, just to get Savage on board, you'd have to go like this into Nightmare Unicorn, which again is something that isn't in the, the deck, but just something to keep in mind. Discard a Uni Zombie, spin a card, and then you'd have to sync these two together just to get a Link 2 attached. So, seems like you're going a little bit out of your way just to get that set up, but it kind of shows you another, again, it's, when it goes off, it's got versatility. It, it does kind of like shove you down a certain road that it wants you to go, but it does give you a bit of versatility to go, right, okay, I want to go more synchro focused, so I'm going to go that way, or I'm going to go more um, zombie focused, or I'm going to go more vampire focused, I want to make sure that I'm getting my big vampires on the board, and I'm going to be able to kind of go from there and burn out my opponent and do what I need to do.
So, yeah. Anyway, I hope this has given you like a quick little basic breakdown of what the deck can do. I hope I've gone into enough detail on all of the test lands to kind of show you the different angles it can take because this deck is incredibly fun. Now, I'm not saying it's going to go win on YCS or anything like that anytime soon, um, but it's certainly a deck that if you've got the pieces lying around and even if you don't, they're incredibly cheap to pick up. Um, it's definitely worth putting together for a vampire deck. They've got to be due some sort of like high level support. I mean, zombies get it all day long. Reptiles have only just got it or get it next week. So it'd be really cool to see the vampires pretty much get a more modernized version of Sorcerer. Uh, hopefully we get like a vampire structure deck. That'd be sick. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Do it to like, comment, subscribe, share. to next time, guys. As absolutely always, stay safe and happy dueling. Show yourself, Obelisk the Tormentor! Game as I call your name, Wing the Dragon of Raw! I summon the Almighty Wiper the Sky Dragon!